Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial by ZebraCode. In this tutorial, we are going to look at for loop in Python. There are many key components to it and we will look at all of them in the course of this tutorial. The for loop is a feature in Python that allows us to do repetitive tasks. It is essential in processing data or files. We can use a for loop to iterate through a file or a list. In the course of this tutorial, you will learn for loops in Python. You will learn about the main components of a for loop. You will also learn how to fix problems with for loop. And in the process, you will learn how to branch and loop within loops. The Python for loop is not like the for loop in some other programming languages that you may be used to. For example, the syntax are not the same. They are quite different. When you look at the Python for loop the first time, it may look confusing because the mechanisms that make the looping to happen are not very clear. However, it will be explained here and this video will help you to understand the process very well. Now, what we have on the screen actually explains the process and the components of a for loop in Python. We have five different components to it and they will all be explained here. To write a for loop code in Python, we use the for, which is a reserved word in Python, and we use it with another reserved word, which is called in. So we use both for and in in our for loop code in Python. After the for keyword, we enter a variable, which is the iterative variable, and that is followed by the in. With the for keyword and the iterating variable, as well as the in, we follow it up with a sequence that the looping we work on. So the first one is the pair reserved keyword, which is for and in. The second one is the iterating variable. And the third one is a sequence object. After the sequence object, we follow it up with a colon. That is the fourth component. With these four components in place, we cannot write our block of code or code block statements. So these are the five components to a for loop in Python. Once again, the for keyword, the iterating variable, the int keyword which we pair with the for keyword, then the sequence, the colon, and the block of code that we want to execute in the for loop. Now with this out of the way, let's actually write some code with for loop in Python. Now let's write some code to demonstrate the for loop in Python. To do that, I have created a file which I named for loop examples.py. You can also do the same thing by creating a file with this name or any name you are happy with. Now I am going to create a variable with the name data file and assign it some values. Data file. ICT sales products human resources marketing. Now let's look through the file for files in data file colon print files. Now let's break out of the loop and print something on the screen is printed. Now save it and let's run it. Run, run, run it again. Yes, it's printed here. It says here, ICT sales, product, human resources, and marketing. What is happening here is not very straightforward, but I can explain the mechanism behind it so that you understand them. We have the keyword here for, and we create a variable with the name files and we use the keyword in. So it's now going to use the data file as the sequence, the data file we have here, and print files, which is this variable. This one is a normal print. So the variable following for is bound to the first value. This variable here is bound to this value in the sequence, and the code block here is executed. 
the variable is then assigned the second value and the code block is executed again. The process continues until the sequence is exhausted or a break statement is executed within the block code. So in our case here, now, there is no uh, break. We will come to that later on in the process. What is clear here is the fact that the variable placed between the for and the in keywords, in our case here, files, iterates through the data file. So after that, it prints out the variable. And our case again is a files. This is the variable we created. And this one iterates through this one. And it's printed out here. Print all is printed. This is to show that the looping has reached the end and a statement is printed out on the screen. So I'll call this one example one, loop through the data file. Now I'm going to do another example, I'll call it example two. I will call it social media listing. Let's create a variable here, social media sites, and I'll enter some value. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, now we are going to loop through the social media site variable. And to do that, we see here for, now let's create a variable for it that we are going to use in our loop. I will call it platforms in, in what? In social media sites. Colon. And let's print it out. Print. Print what? In this case, we are going to print our variable, which is platforms. Now we can also loop, break out of the loop and print something out. Our social media size. Now let's run it. Great. It was printed correctly. We have here Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Our social media size, which means everything was printed correctly. So that is another way of writing a for loop in python let's do some more examples this time example three i will call it working with photos let's create a variable here we'll call it my photos say cat dot jpg dog dot png fish dot gif birds dot jpg maybe a few more or one more lion.png so we've got some elements in our list now so let's print it out for for what we can call it for pictures in my photo colon we want to print everything out print print what we are going to print uh, pictures this is our variable that we are going to use to loop through my photos so we just enter here pictures we will enter here pictures break out of it print that is the content of my photo album so let's run it great it was done successfully i'm going to move this one up a bit here it says cat dog fish bird lion so all the contents of the list are all printed you can let correct that one but cut run it one more time and it's going to print it out exactly now everything is printed correctly cut.jpg dog.png and so on that is the content of my photo album great it was printed successfully cat dog fish bed and so on so that was another way of writing a for loop code in python we can do some more examples example four using for loop with range and the random module to do this we will have to import the random module at the start of our document import random so that we enable us to use the feature for random in our code this example we are going to do now we produce 10 random numbers between 0, 0.0 and up to but we not include 1.0 so to do that we may not need to write a variable first we can just write a for loop with range that is for i in range 10 there colon say x equals random 
dot random now let's print s now let's break out of the loop with a print statement so nicely printed let's run it great it was run successfully let's move this one up so that we can read it yes we have 10 random numbers and they are all between 0 0.0 and without including 1.0 so they are all between 0 0.0 and 1.0 so it's not including a 1.0 because 0 0.92 and so on is below 1.0 and each time you run this program you will get different values because they are printed randomly to check that uh, the last one here now is ending with 5738 let's run it again and see what we are going to get yes you can see the last one now is 9707 so these numbers are generated randomly we have done two things here now the first one is to do a for loop within a range and also use the random dot random uh, function this function is within the random module that was the reason why we have to import it here first before we were able to use it all right now with that out of the way let's run another example with a for loop this will be example five yes this is also about using the for loop in range let's do it first with your number or int for s in range 0 12 colon now let's print it out print what now we are going to print x so let's break out of it print oh done correctly so let's run it great it was printed successfully and what do we get we have here some numbers ranging from 0 to 11 what is happening here now is for the range between 0 and 12 so it's actually printing out the values between 0 and 12 so 12 is not added because what we are actually looking for is within that range 0 and 12 so 12 is not going to be added in this case but everything will be between that range 0 and 12 and that is why we have 11 as the last element there now let's write another example and this time it will be for string let's quickly copy that line paste it here this will be example 6 using a for loop in range but this time it's going to be a string so I will enter a variable here my name equals zebra code and let's loop through it for name in what in my name colon print out name okay my name equals zebra code for name in my name print name so let's break out of that loop print finished printing so it was printed successfully let's look at it again and see what has been printed yes all uh, is printed correctly zebra code rating downwards each letter in the name is printed in its own line write another one we also need to understand that it doesn't have to be a variable it can also be a for loop just with a name in the sequence position how do we do that i will just write another example here example 6a and in this case i'm going to say for info in zebra code now let's print out info print info I'll print another statement here once again done correctly let's run it great it was also printed correctly this is the first one zebra code and now the second one again zebra code so what is happening here is easy to understand here we created a variable and assigned it the name zebra code we used a for loop with another variable name to loop through my variable this one here and printed it out but in the second part 
Example 6a, we did not specifically create a variable. We just used a for loop with a variable and looped through this uh, sequence zebra code. Then we printed it out. Now with that done, we can create another example. Call it example 7. In this case, we are going to use a for loop with a break. How do we do that? It's simple. I will create a variable, the name users equals enter some names, Gambo, Leo, Gary, Eric, Leonard. One more, Hans, Linda. Okay, we have that now. We are going to do a for loop here. I will say for, I just call it ms in, in what? In users. I will use some ifs here. If ms equals equals, so if it is empty, print some print what print empty element found then break this is what we are trying to use here it will break this time around so let's go out of the for loop break this is what we are trying to do now print ms let's break out of the loop and print something here are the users names okay now we have users as our variable and we assigned it these values we are going to look through it here for ms is our variable iterating variable in users if ms equals equals empty that is in double quote if it is empty print empty elements found then break so if we run it now everything prints successfully without breaking we have Gambo, Leo, Gary, Erica, and so on. Here are the user's name. Great. There is no empty element. What happens if we add an empty element to it? Now, we have this empty element. Let's print it out again. Great. It was printed successfully. But what did we get? No, this time, we only got three elements printed out before it reached the empty element which is Gambo is printed, Leo is printed, Gary is printed, but this element is empty and it breaks out of the loop. It printed empty elements found. Here are the user's name. So when it got to this particular empty element, it decided to break out of the loop. That is why we have only three elements printed out. There is another feature we can use to continue without actually breaking. Now I am going to turn this break to a comment and use another word continue so that even if it finds an empty element, it should continue printing. Let's do that. Let's test it. It was printed successfully. Let's look at our code. Great. Everything was printed successfully. Here it says what we expected it to say. Gambo leo gary then empty element found it continued erica leonard hans and binta so what is actually happening here is it lets you know that an empty element has been found or some empty elements have been found but it will not stop printing rather it will continue printing it prints everything out and you can see where there is an empty element in your list so with that one out of the way we can enter a few more examples that was example seven now i'm going to do example eight i'm going to bind some elements together here binding together some elements with a for loop that is easy to do and how do we do it here we will create two variables we'll call the first one countries equals usa nigeria Belgium, Germany, India, the UK. Now we are going to add the international calling code for each country. Code equals USA is plus plus one, Nigeria is plus two three four, Belgium is plus three two, Germany is plus 49 India is plus 91 and the UK is plus 44 great now we have two variables here 
that we are going to use a for loop on and we will bind them together. There are different ways to do this, but let's try this one first. For i in in range, check the length, which is L E N, the length of what? Length of countries, colon, now print print what? Print countries. Then this is like an array print countries i then code uh, as well this was poorly indented okay we fix that indented properly uh, let's break out of that loop and print something print print countries and their international and dialing code let's run it great everything was done successfully here usa one nigeria two three four belgium 32 germany 49 india 91 the plus was missing here for india we can quickly fix that okay now let's print it great it's printed correctly so that is how you use again the for loop in python to bind some elements or some variables that was one way of doing it another way of doing it would be this I'll call this one now wait a binding variables. I'm going to use a uh, courses here, Python, Java, C, PHP, CSS, HTML, MySQL. So that should be okay for now. Let's give each and every one of them a course code, that is a number it num equals so let's just see here 101 330 now we have courses and their respective numbers that we need to bind together to do that is also very easy how we now say for courses norms in zip Courses, norms, colon, and let's print something out. Print and print courses. I'm going to put some asterisks here, comma. What is the next one? Norms. So let's break out of that for loop. Courses and their code numbers. Let's run it. Great. As expected, it was printed the way we programmed it. Here we have used the three things for, in, and zip to look through these two sequences, courses and norms. This is another way of using the for loop in Python. Here I'm going to do another example and I will call it example nine for loop with product and prices. All right, let me clear the screen here. Let's create a variable here and call it products. Products desktop laptop microphones phones now let's create another variable we we'll call it prices c50 499 130 and 320 now let's do our for loop here but before then let's print something out on the screen print products prices here okay we are going to print this one as a header print products and prices now let's do our for loop for i in range length products colon let's print something print products i prices i and let's break out of it and print something print our cat log so let's run it great it was run successfully let's see what was printed we have here products prices desktop 650 laptop 499 microphone 130 phones 320 our catalog so in this tutorial we have looked at different ways we can use the for loop in python programming 
language. It is a very useful feature in the Python programming language. Once again, I would like to remind you that the way that you write the for loop syntax in Python is completely different from the way you write for loop syntax in other programming languages. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye for now.